Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new Sit Down Sunday video. Today I'm quilting a bit more on my pear table runner and I'm filling in the background with four different designs and quilting with collage style quilting. So let's jump on the quilt and I'll talk you through how this works. So I am quilting four different designs in this quilt and the first one I want to show you is called Brain Coral. And this is one of my favorite designs. So you start with basically a stippling like shape, just a random wiggly freeform shape. And the more wiggly and branchy it is, the better it'll end up looking because we're aiming for a look kind of like coral that you see in a coral reef. Now I'm gonna travel stitch over and echo around it. And this is how you expand the design, make it bigger and really start to punch up that texture. It's the echoes that really do all the work. Now I'm going to connect with that, travel stitch a bit against another one, travel stitch back up, and then I'm going to swing around for another echo. And you can keep echoing around as many times as you want. Now I am getting quite close to the edge over here, so I'm going to be careful as I travel stitch down. I might just do a few echoes in this area, because I know that I'm probably going to trim this table runner probably with that fold, that crease line there in the uh, edge of the table runner. This was uh, one of those table runners I got from Ikea and then it just picked out the hem, but it still has a little bit of that fold left in it so I can use that as a guide and not quilt beyond it. That'll be kind of helpful. To move on with the brain coral design, you just stitch another wiggly wobbly shape and travel stitch and echo it. And I think where I'm at in the quilt right now, I think I wanna change designs. I'm gonna to change to a design called root pockets. And this starts with a big teardrop shape, a big leaf shape actually. I'm gonna to come to a point and then stitch all the way back. Now I'm gonna fill this with a design called tree roots. So I'm gonna stitch down and just branch off randomly. There's a lot of travel stitching involved with this design. So I branch out from that stem and wiggle down to form a, a, like a tree root kind of looking shape. And then I just keep branching back. The key with this is the travel stitching. So you've gotta form that wiggly line, then travel stitch back, then branch out always travel stitching along that line and you really want to build up thread here travel stitching back and forth oops I need to be careful not to travel stitch too many times or my thread might start to skip I noticed one little skip right there and this is one of those things as I'm quilting also paying really close attention to my machine and I'm noticing it's right through here when I see a thread skip, I can actually see the thread kind of bow out slightly in that area, and it's fast, but if you're really paying attention, you can catch it. Catch all those little nuances of your machine, and that will really help you start focusing in on things that are going on with it, and just that might clue you in, like, okay, oh, okay, the machine just skipped, I need to make sure not to make that exact same move again, or I just need to get out of that area and move on with the design. You can see I just wiggle around and as randomly as possible form these tree branchy kind of shapes, these tree root shapes. I love this design. It does tend to get a little intense, you know, uh, the more you stitch it, you know, obviously the more you can fill it in. And you don't have to go this dense, you know, you could just stitch a very simple little tree branch or root, root uh, into the area and leave it at that. I'm wanting this to be really filled and pretty intense. That's just what I'm in the mood for today. So that's why I'm spending a little extra time here really filling it in. So that's as full as I think it needs to be. It's actually pretty, pretty intense back here. You can see it around the foot. So now the next step of the design is to travel stitch an echo around it. This is a pivoting design. It's a little different from Brain Coral, the design we learned first in that you pivot and quilt around it and you really want to build up te texture, build up thread right at that starting point. So I'm gonna stitch back and forth a few times around that and then I'm gonna swing around. You can see the difference here is that I really emphasize that starting point. Swirl around again. I think I may go around one more time. Just like that. 
looks good. So the cool thing about collage style quilting is you really just kind of get to do whatever you want to, whatever you feel like at any particular time. And I feel like forming another root pocket shape right here. Because these shapes stand out so much on the quilt, I really think it's a good idea to quilt them, at least two of them. So I'm quilting always a pair, <laughs> a pair on a pair. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad pun. Uh, I'm quilting a pair of root pocket shapes on this pair of table runner. <laughs> so I think it's gonna look the best that way uh, to have two leaves branching out every time I stitch them. You could always do more, but you see how time consuming this is. This is a lot slower because I'm having to go in and do all this detailed stitching and travel stitching within each leaf shape. And I really want them all to be consistently filled the same amount. This is just me being kind of eh, a little nitpicky, honestly. But, you know, it doesn't have to be this full, but that's the look I'm going for. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I hope you saw that. Back up the video so you can see there was just a little bit of skip right there. So I'm gonna rotate this ever so slightly on the table so that way I'm at a different position, kind of a different location, and I think that's going to help. So I shifted the quilt around and repositioned it a bit because I saw the thread was doing something weird and that was a, a signal to me that I needed to change the orientation of the quilt and also maybe lighten up a little bit on my travel stitching. So you just have to tune in and really be vigilant and paying attention to every little thing that's happening on your machine and that's going to help you prevent thread breaks. You know, had I let it continue to skip, I probably would have broken thread right there. So now I'm going to do my echo quilting and I'm just pivoting off that starting point. I like to do a little bit of travel stitching there to build it up nicely and then I pivot around. And the cool thing is because we're going for that travel stitching, I can always use that space to kind of get through the design and get to another area. Cool. So now I'm moving down. I want to move downward towards this new pair. It's lower in the quilt. And I want to quilt a nice big design that's going to take up a lot of space. And a good choice for that is my third design that I'm using in this quilt, and that is Fossil Snail. So this design starts, it's kind of a foundational base. You're gonna start with a big open spiral. So I'm leaving about a half of an inch of space as I spiral inside. You can see you're gonna need a little bit of space on your quilt just to plan this out. And then now I reach the center and I'm just bouncing back and forth with these bouncy echoes to get out. This is what's gonna create the fossil snail look. I love this design, it's very intense. You can see I'm slowing down as I bounce. I hit that line and I speed up and then I hit the opposite line. So I'm just bouncing between those two lines of quilting back and forth. And I have this very subtle variegated thread. This is a YLI Variations variegated thread. It's my favorite variegated because it has these really subtle thread color changes. They're not real dramatic, but every once in a while, it'll go to that light green. And I just think that looks so pretty. That really looks nice. So I'm just bouncing between the lines. And as I'm spiraling out, I'm paying attention, of course, to any thread issues. You know, there might be a particular direction that my machine doesn't like to quilt in. And I have to watch out for that. Uh, I was thinking that because it was a long arm and it didn't have feed dogs that I wouldn't have to worry about what direction to stitch in, but you know, thread is thread and a machine is a machine and I found that it can still be sensitive to the direction that you're stitching in. And if you stitch in the wrong direction for too long, it's going to have an issue. So you just have to be vigilant and watch out for that on your machine. But so far this design is really working well. You can see I've got good speed control. That's just, I'm just kind of very lightly pressing down on the foot pedal and I'm trying to balance that with the speed of my hands. If I sped up, I definitely can speed up here. My stitches are gonna get smaller because my hands, yeah, I'm gonna have to slow down. My hands just can't keep up with it. It's a very small movement and I don't wanna get sloppy. Now that I'm coming out of that 
fossil snail shape, that circular spiral shape, I'm gonna start expanding these bouncy echoes so that I'm making them bigger. And I want them to, to branch out just a little bit here. I think that really makes it look nice. I'm just gonna bounce back and forth and go all the way to that tip. So this is the cool thing about this design. It stacks together in a really unusual way and you really get to make up, just kind of make it up on the fly as far as where it goes next and how you fill it next. So I could come down and swing in a spiral this way. I could arch the spiral around and swirl it the opposite direction. Uh, I could also kind of create a second channel and just kind of echo around this first spiral shape. It really pays to just look at the quilt and kind of trace your finger along it and figure out what you want to do. I think I want to bring a spiral in that curls the opposite direction. So here's what I'm going to do. Bring down my line and swirl my spiral shape in just like this. That looks good. And then to start my echoes, I just start with just a, kind of like a, just a simple arch shape and then I just start bouncing back and forth around that. And this was just a little bit messy to get started. Sometimes it is hard to talk and quilt at the same time. <laughs> but you know what? Throw more thread at it. I'm not gonna rip it out. I'm just gonna throw more thread at it and build up that texture. And you will not be able to tell that that was a little bit messy. It's just gonna look a little bit more green because I've travel stitched over it a few more times. And the other thing to keep in mind too is fossil snail, because you're bouncing against it, you're also building up thread there too. So it's gonna to tend to be a darker design, a, a bold design on the surface of your quilt, especially if you're quilting it with contrasting thread like I am. So as I bounce back and forth, that's also going to build up the texture in that area and kind of hide those initial stitching mistakes. Yeah, it's easy to stitch off your line. It's just one of those things, and I'm still learning how to control my speed and movement on this machine. It's not always easy. There's a lot more speed here, and I'm just starting to get the hang of that. So you can probably hear, I'm pressing down a little bit more, just a little bit more as I quilt that art shape, and then I slow down, I back off ever so slightly as I hit that line, so that way I don't overshoot it and I'm not stitching too many times in place. So now I'm gonna keep filling back all the way to that starting point. I like to fill in all those little nooks and crannies. And the nice thing is you don't ever have to question what to fill it in with. You're just gonna fill it in with these bouncy echoes. And then little spaces you can fill in just with back and forth travel stitching and that'll fill it in with thread. So that looks nice. I really think that's funky. It stands out nicely on the quilt. But there's one last design that I'm using in this background and that is concentric circles. And this is a great design for spaces like this that are real tight and tiny and kind of hard to fill with any other design. So I'm gonna start with just a circle shape and I'm just gonna quilt a few spy just regular basic spirals because this is so small you kind of would lose the design if I bothered to quilt the entire design in this area. I'm going to quilt a few spirals here, and then I'll show you how to do regular concentric circles next. And this looks like this one's going to be big enough. So I quilt a circle shape. Now I'm going to spiral inside and quilt another circle inside. I'm going to travel stitch around that circle one time, and then spiral my way back out. So by doing it that way, you end up with two circles in this space. Here's one that's just a little bit bigger. Spiral inside, quilt a circle in the middle, travel stitch around that circle, and I'm kind of looking for the space where I can spiral back out right through the middle of the gap left when I first spiraled inside. And here I'll quilt a really big one for you. If you can expand this, you can make these huge. They're not gonna be very big on this quilt, but you could make them much bigger if you wanted to. So now I'm quilting inside with a spiral. Once I get to the middle, I fill in with a circle and travel stitch around it. Now I'll travel stitch around until I reach a point where I can branch off and spiral back out again. 
So any kind of circular design, I mean, you could do regular pebbling, you could do pebbling with basic spirals in it. Any kind of circular stacking pebbling design is gonna fill in this background space really nicely. Any little gap, any weird areas, it's gonna fill it in perfectly so that you don't have to worry about it. You can see how I used concentric circles over here on this side to fill in the area around the leaves. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed learning the style of quilting. It's really funky and freeform. You can kind of do whatever you want with it. Uh, it really just comes down to your choice of designs and how often you want to be changing designs. I would say that this is very entertaining. You know, like if I picked one design and quilted it through the entire background, I would be pretty bored uh, about halfway through the quilt. Because I get to play with four different designs and constantly changing them, it's really entertaining and it kind of always keeps it flowing. And you know, if there's a particular design that I really like and I'm enjoying, I can quote a little bit more of it. Uh, and if there's a design that I'm like, uh, I really don't want to do much more of that, I can quote one or two repetitions of it and be done with it. Uh, it is working really, really well on this long arm and I'm really excited about it. Uh, I was breaking thread a little bit more at the beginning when I first started the table runner, uh, but I started noticing, you know, just some speed movement stuff, just watching the speed, watching the direction and the angle I was quilting in, and that definitely helped. You know, sometimes it can be the height of your foot on the surface of the quilt, it can be the thread, it can be a lot of different things that cause threads to skip and then break. Uh, so next week, why don't I share a video about how to adjust the height of your foot to get it just right so it stops it from skipping. So I think I'll share that next week. So be looking forward to that video coming up soon. If you have any questions about quilting on your table mounted or set down long arm, please post in the comments below. I may just make a video just for you. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel on YouTube so you don't miss out on the next video coming out soon. Until next time, let's go quilt.